Hello everyone, Dr. Laura Mock here again. It is Thursday afternoon before um, Christmas and I'm done until after Christmas so I'm happy to be finished working and back doing this really enjoyable thing that I do making videos for you all. So I've been trying to pay attention online and with my um, circle of friends about what people have been feeling, uh, what has been bothering people, so that I can make sure my videos are on point, that they're um, talking about things that are, um, what's the word I'm looking for, relevant right now. And so today I have decided to talk to you about what to do if you have someone that you serve in whatever capacity, maybe you're an, um, a dentist like me, maybe you're a physician, maybe you serve in the public, massage therapist, whatever it is that you do, what do you do when somebody you serve complains or writes a bad review? First of all, I want you to know that if you are listening to this video, you're probably someone who really cares about that, who isn't just going to be able to immediately brush off what that person said. It is going to hurt. And you, you're naturally a person who wants to help. So when you find out that you didn't help, you're going to feel bad. And I would suggest that you buckle in and feel the feel. Because trying to run away from that feeling is not going to work in your favor. And again, I know I say this all the time, but ask me how I know that. <laughs> The feelings will chase you down. And while you are running away from those feelings, you might do some damage to yourself in the meantime. So what we're going to do is talk about some steps to take once you um, find out that you have disappointed someone. And this video is not about your legal or your um, rights, your regulations surrounding your options as far as what to do with the complaint. This is all about what's happening here and here. So I'm telling you right now, if you don't address it, like I said, it's going to do some damage for you. So first of all, and this is the most external thing that you can do, but it's also the quickest and it can really help when you're feeling bad. And that is to find some support. So I suggest that you reach out to some friends some colleagues, supporters, um, to surround yourself with some externally sourced confidence for as long as you need. And this confidence is a substitute for what you really need as far as long-term long inner peace, but it will help get you over the hump that you just can't, in that moment when you're feeling those feels, you might not really feel like you can be like, I'm the best dentist ever or whatever. So you're going to reach out and find some people who can say, yes, actually you are quite good. And that's okay. Usually I talk to my husband or my sisters in dentistry or my sisters in real life. I have, um, I have four sisters and two sisters-in-law. So a lot of times I'll reach out to them and see what they have to say if I'm feeling bad. And the next step is to put some perspective on the complaint. So for example, um, this one's really important and I do it all the time. If I find somebody is unhappy with me, I go back and I look at all of my old reviews. We've been collecting reviews for a long time in our practice. So there's probably 90 of them on Google and there's a lot on Facebook too, maybe 40 or 50. And out of all those reviews, I have for sure less than 10 bad ones and several of the bad ones, they never even met me or they were complaining about something that um, was a misunderstanding. So when I go and I look at those, those good reviews, I can be like, oh yeah, this person likes me, this person likes me, I did that thing for this person. There's this one lady who early on said that when I, um, when I touched her mouth, it was like my fingers were angel's wings. <laughs> And sometimes I'll read that one and I'll be like, that's right. <laughs> that was a very sweet one. Um, so yeah, that when you're putting your perspective 
on it, you're gonna start by looking at all of your good reviews or if you're not someone who has reviews, your thank you notes, the compliments that people have given you, that sort of thing. And then the next step is to just realize that people who leave, leave scathing, scathing reviews, people who leave scathing reviews online are usually whiners. So they're people who have learned in this life that the way you get something done is by complaining. And honestly, at this point, you know, if you're listening to me, you're probably not a whiner. And we can all as a group celebrate that that is not how we view the world and feel a little bit sorry for the person who thinks that that's how you get things done. Because honestly, would you like to live, walk in this world with that attitude? What a depressing way to live. So we, we've got that we're going to look at our good reviews and then we're going to recognize that a lot of times when you get a bad review, it's from a whiner. And then also, just think about it for a second. Put your consumer hat on for a minute and pretend that you're looking for a new doctor or you're wondering if you're going to try this piece of electronics or whatever and you're doing research and looking at reviews. Maybe you're looking at a restaurant. How many of you, when you're scrolling through the reviews, can use your whiner radar to recognize when you see someone who just complains about everything? That might be what's happening with your bad review or your complaint. So just keep in mind that just because there's a bad review doesn't mean everybody who looks at your office is going to go, oh, somebody complained and they seem really unhappy, so I guess I shouldn't go there. Consumers are more savvy than that. And then also with regards to the perspective, how about asking yourself how long this complaint or this review is going to negatively affect your life? Ask yourself honestly what this is. Is it next week? Next year? And also, is there anything that you can do to change the outcome? And this is where we get into that part where I'm not going to discuss it here because there's a lot of different um, nuances to what your rights are and stuff, but for sure you can ask the patients or the people that you serve that you know like you to help bury that review under other good reviews, honest reviews, reviews that are um, that are legit. I'm not suggesting we make things up, but how about inviting the people who we know love our service to go ahead and give us a thumbs up? There's other things that you can do to change the outcome too. Um, like if there's something about the review that you feel has a vein of truth to it, you can reach out and apologize or um, you can get better. We've uh, improved our system several times after people complained and we're better for it. The next step is that you can rejoice that you no longer have to deliver service, in my case, dental care, to this impossible to please person. How nice of them to leave a slot in your time availability that is now open to somebody who likes you and who appreciates you. And at the same time, um, take a moment to look at your brand and what your strengths are and make sure those are defined so that you know exactly what type of patient or consumer or customer you're looking for. This might be a great opportunity for you if you haven't looked at your brand or established exactly who you serve to say, I serve X, Y, and Z and they appreciate it and this is how they show their appreciation. And you would be surprised how that changes how you treat people and what you expect from your customers. The next step is to take inventory of yourself. And what I mean by this is, what awesome things have you done to get to this point you're in, you are in your life right now? So for example, if I was going to answer this, I would be like, well, um, I grew up, I got married, I had some babies, I decided I wanted to be a dentist, I started from scratch, and I took a bunch of science, and I took a super hard test, and I actually was able to compete with my peers who didn't have kids. I got into school. I worked, 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 worked. I got done with dental school. I thought I was done learning things. I was wrong. And then I kept on doing all this continuing education and all this um, people skills uh, nurturing until I've gotten here. So and once I look at all those things that I've done to get to this point, it's easier for me to 
for me to see the special skills that I have to offer the people around me. And it helps me know that some of the things in that review are probably factually false or that are an opportunity for me to turn what Shep Hyken calls a moment of misery into a moment of magic, meaning we can take um, what happened there and we can actually improve our process, which I know I already mentioned, but that inventory is important because we forget in the space that we're in right now, how far we have come since we were, you know, that high schooler or that middle school girl that was super awkward or for me, squishy all over or whatever is was wrong at the time and now look at you. Look how far you've come. Okay, so somebody wasn't happy with you. Were they happy with anybody? Are they a whiner? Finally, I want you to understand, and this is a really important one and it's a subject for another day, but if you want to learn more about it, let me know because you can contact me. We can talk about it in person. Happier thoughts and feelings are available to you right now. So once you've gone through that mourning process of feeling sad about the fact that you let somebody down, understand that your feelings are a result of the thoughts in your mind. And because we are humans who are self-aware, we can actually influence what our brains are thinking about. Most of us don't. Most of us are on autopilot, but we can control what is what is narrating, what our brain is narrating. So for example, right now, you could do this. You could think in your head, I am controlling my brain right now. And you can say that in your mind right now. And you did it, okay? And if you, that's a pretty neutral um, statement, but you could choose more positive statements. Make sure they're statements you believe, because if you don't believe them, your brain's gonna be like, no, that was shit. But if you say to yourself, You've already taken inventory of yourself, so you can say, that person's a whiner. I've done what I can to fix it, and I have done all these things that make me great at what I do. And every time you hear your brain start to go on autopilot and be like, I suck, or um, my service isn't worth anything, you can go, oh, I forgot. I'm choosing not to think that anymore. That person is a whiner. I'm good at what I do, whatever it is you choose that you want to think. And you'd be surprised how much you can control how you're feeling. So I think that that is it. I hope that some of you have something to say about this. Um, I'm going to be blasting it out everywhere since I've had a lot of people talking to me lately about disappointing people and I hope this makes a difference for you. Please share it if it does. There's a lot of us that are in service industries who need a boost every now and then and I'd be happy to take part in that. And if you have any comments or questions, reach out to me. You can do it on my Facebook page. You can do it on YouTube. You can send me a private message or an email. My email address is in Facebook and on the YouTube page and I'd love to hear from you. I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and thanks for listening.